Hello everyone and welcome back. Jeb Smith here. So in today's video, we're going to talk about evictions in a little bit more detail because there's a little bit of confusion out there with regards to the eviction and foreclosure moratorium that recently got extended through the end of March. So as many of you know, it was set to expire at the end of January and as President Biden was elected into office, one of the executive orders he signed was extending this foreclosure and eviction moratorium, the federal ban uh, through the CDC through the end of March. And so right now, as of today, we're, we're at the end of January. And so, you know, this has been pushed out another two months, but a lot of people out there are just under the impression that because that moratorium um, has been extended, that they're not going to be evicted from their property. They don't understand that there's actually a process. Uh, there's an application that needs to be filled out from the tenant and provided to the landlord, which we're going to go over today in detail. Um, and if you're in the state of California, for example, Gavin Newsom actually extended the order even further past March um, out into the middle of summer, which we're going to take a look at that as well. So if you're in California, it's it's you know, almost five months out from now, the eviction and foreclosure moratorium. But again, the same rules apply. You have to fill out this application in order to qualify for for that eviction. So you can't just stop making your rent payments and not talk to your landlord and expect to stay in the property. Now, in some cases, that might happen. But if you truly don't want to be affected during this time, then you have to fill out this application, provide it, and then we're also going to talk about the relief money that was passed as part of the last stimulus bill before President Trump left office in December. There was $25 billion uh, applied towards rental relief. We're going to talk about how that's going to come into play. And in the state of California, you know, they address that in the article that we're going to pull up when that's going to become available for tenants and for landlords. So something to pay attention to. Now, Keep in mind, depending on the state that you're in, um, may you know they, they may have some overlays with regards to evictions and foreclosure moratorium. But the federal ban is at the end of March. States like New York and California, I know, have put measures in place to extend it further. So make sure you're paying attention to the state that you're located in, um, just so that there's no surprises. And then also make sure that you're you know you're using this application, which we're going to. Um, pull up here in just a minute. So, but 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 first, before we do any of that, we're going to take a look at the extension and foreclosure moratorium that, that Governor Gavin Newsom put in place, extending the eviction and foreclosure moratorium through the end of June. So, let's take a minute and pull that up and see exactly what that looks like here. So, as you'll see, um, you know, I've I've taken a little bit of time to highlight the things that I think are most important in the article, but I will link to it below if you want to read the entire article if you are here in the state of California, just so you have an idea of exactly what is going on. So as you see here, Governor Gavin Newsom today signed legislation to extend the state's landmark eviction moratorium through June 30th. So today it's the end of January, January 31st. This is actually pushing it out an additional five months through the end of June. Now, this was signed, I believe, last Monday. Uh, the legislation signed today pauses evictions for tenants who declare under perjury, uh, under penalty of perjury, an inability to pay all or part of the rent due to a COVID-related reason. Tenants are still responsible for paying unpaid amounts to property owners, but those unpaid amounts cannot be the basis for an eviction even after the moratorium ends. So it says right there that, you know, even though you're not making your payments, you're still responsible for those payments. So keep that in mind, tenants. This isn't just free money, right? This could come back to haunt you at some point, um, you know, if you get taken to court or or what have you. So, you know, while there's a moratorium in place that keeps you in the property, there is still money due. There is still rent due, but you do have to fill out that application in order to avoid the eviction process. And not only do you have to fill out the application, you have to, you know, you have to meet the requirements in that application, which we're going to take a look at. So SB 91 also establishes the rental assistance, the state rental assistance program to allocate 2.6 billion in federal rental assistance California will receive. The program will target aid to income qualified tenants most at risk with unpaid back rent. Assistance will also be extended to property owners. This is the key part, will be extended to property owners who agree to waive 20 percent of unpaid rent. 
By agreeing to this waiver, property owners will become eligible for 80% in rent reimbursements for amounts owed between April 1st of 2020 and March 31st, 2021. So if you're a landlord and you agree to waive up to 20% of unpaid rents, the state will reimburse you for those additional amounts, that other 80%. Um, so keep that in mind, landlords, but it's not coming quite yet. So the state rental assistance program will begin accepting applications from property owners and tenants in March. So not February, it's not even February yet. So you got another month before the application can actually be sent in, but keep in mind there might be relief. So, you know, just hang on if you can. So SB 91 prohibits the selling or assigning of rental debt that was accrued from March 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021 until the end of the moratorium. However, the prohibition is permanent with respect to the rental debt of people at or below 80% of area median income who meet the eligibility requirements of the rental assistance program. Property owners or other housing providers are also prohibited from using COVID-19 related debt as a negative factor for evaluating a housing application or as the basis for refusing rent to an otherwise qualified tenant. So that's a whole different animal there and not going to dive into a lot of detail there, but I will put this article up if you want to take a look at it. So you have a little bit more information if you're here in the state of California. Now, the application that I'm going to pull up here in just a minute applies to everyone. That is not just a, uh, a California thing. This is the application that that will be used um, regardless of, of where you're located here. So let me pull this over just a little bit so you can see it. All right, so this is now, it shows at the top there that the expiration date was January 31st. I assume that this is going to be the same application they use going forward through March 31st. I couldn't find an updated version of this, um, but this is essentially the, the document that as a tenant, you had to sign if you weren't able to make your payments and provide it to your landlord. So we're gonna read this here just so you have a clear understanding of what it is that you're signing. So under the CDC's order, you must provide a copy of this declaration to your landlord, owner of the residential property where you live or other person who has a right to have you evicted or removed from where you live. Each adult listed on the lease, rental application, or housing contract should complete this declaration. So every person in the household that's of adult age should fill out this application. You are still required to pay rent and follow all other terms of your lease and rules of the place where you live. You, must also, you may also be evicted for reasons other than not paying rent or making a housing payment. So key there, guys, just because you know there's a moratorium in place doesn't mean you can can't get evicted even you know uh, for things other than than the rent so so what are you signing basically this is it so you're going to agree to all of these things assuming they are true if they're not true then you shouldn't be signing this document and providing it to your landlord so i have used best efforts to obtain all available government assistance for rent or housing i either expect to earn no more than ninety nine thousand in annual income for calendar year from 2020 to 2021 or no more than 198 if of filing a joint tax return, was not required to report any income in 2019 to the U.S. Uh, IRS or received an economic impact payment pursuant to the CARES Act. So if any of those things apply, then you're good. I am unable to pay my full rent or make a full housing payment due to substantial loss of household income, loss of uh, compensatable hours of work or wages, layoffs, or extraordinary out-of-pocket medical expenses. I'm using bef best efforts to make timely partial payments that are as close to the full payment as the individual circumstances may permit, taking into account non other non-discretionary expenses. If evicted, I would likely become homeless, need to move to a homeless shelter, so on and so forth. I understand that I must still pay rent or make a housing payment and comply with other obligations that I may have under my tenancy, lease agreement, or similar contract. I further, uh, further understand that fees, penalties, or interest for not paying rent or making a housing payment on time as required by my tenancy lease agreement or similar contract may still be charged or collected. Last one, I further understand that at the end of this temporary halt, and again, this one was January 31st, I assume same document's going to be extended through March 31st here um, with the CDC, my housing provider may require payment in full or all payments not made prior to and during the temporary halt and failure to make may make me subject to eviction pursuant to state and local laws. And you go on to sign it basically saying under the perjury of, you know, law that, you know, 
I understand that any false or misleading statements or omissions may result in criminal and civil actions for fines, penalties, damages, or imprisonment. So you're signing that document as someone who could potentially be evicted and you're agreeing to all of those things. So assuming you qualify there, it's in theory, you should not be evicted from your property. Now, I know I have people reaching out on my video saying, hey, look, I, you know, I'm still being evicted from my property or I was evicted. It's maybe, I don't know the the exact reasoning, reasoning, but chances are, you know, if you didn't provide this documentation or didn't meet these qualifications, then your la landlord can essentially pursue that eviction. So keep that in mind, you know, and, and right now, again, through March 31st here, uh, you know, through the CDC's ban, but California is through June. You know, if you're somebody that's in that position, just continue to, to make sure you're following this. I'm going to continue to update you guys as these moratoriums extend or things happen in the moratorium requirements um, are mentioned or what have you. There could be additional stimulus coming as part of President Biden's uh, plan, uh, you know, a, a third stimulus package, which could address again some of this stuff and even provide more money for past due rent payments because, you know, again, he mentioned $30 billion towards rental relief. So all of that could go to potentially helping tenants. Um, but as a tenant, make sure you're meeting these qualifications. But again, I'll continue to update you on this information. So do me a favor. If you like content like this, uh, want to stay up to date, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you have questions, comments, leave them below. Um, but once again, I will continue to to be here to you know provide you information uh, as it becomes available. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Appreciate the support. We'll see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye bye.